and right now of course i'm the first one in the world and i think i'm the only one right now there's nobody else who's done a phd in the subject kudos to us indians yes, right the world's first image scientist and impact strategist has been honored with several national and international awards i have about 3 decades of work experience and out of that about 2 decades goes into corporate the genesis of the thought of this book actually came from the fiki summit 2013 where they shared that by 2030 india will be one of the youngest nations in the world when i read that my eyes just popped up and i was like wow what an opportunity for india imagine having such a young workforce by 2030 and instantly i asked myself kuljeet what can you do where i saw there was a common denominator that common denominator was the lack of ability or shall i say the lack of prowess to be able to make an impact and this happened regardless of age and experience of people less known to most people the image industry itself has a seven level hierarchy of sorts starting with level 1 and the topmost is level 7 and this is based on the proficiency on the educational qualifications on the depth of study on experience and so on and so forth uh, and get yourself to be an incredible version of yourself yes. keep working in yourself i think if you keep investing in yourself you will eventually get there but if you think i'm okay the way i am and i don't need to work then i mean nobody ladies and gentlemen i'm proud and honored to welcome the world's first image scientist an impact strategist has been honored with several national and international awards for excellence in the world of innovation education and social impact including the karmavir chakra award by the united nations and i congo she has been awarded with the esteemed honor of genius polymath being an image scientist and aviator pilot an entrepreneur an author an educationist and a creative director amongst other hats that she wears she has pioneered the science of prim with multiple inventions and scientific models for augmentations of an individual's persona and image she is on a mission to impact professionals and the youth of the world to become more confident powerful self-reliant and incredible versions of themselves ladies and gentlemen she is also an independent director certified by iica ministry of corporate affairs government of india she is the national president of the women's indian chamber of commerce and industry for life skills the g100 india chairperson vnv and the all india chairperson for image management She is an international thought leader and celebrity mentor who guides and mentors public figures, celebrities, business owners, C-suite professionals, management professionals from all walks of life and helps them to become impactful and powerful version of themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the very beautiful Dr. Kuljeet Uppal. Thank you so much. What um, um, how Thank you. you. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for inviting me at Visionary Voices. I am looking forward, forward to a great discussion with you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Can you tell us about your journey to being the world's first image scientist? Tell us more about yourself. How did it all start and what inspired you to take this path? That's a very interesting question in fact because I've been asked this a mu- million times probably. Yes, absolutely. Um what was the whole thing as to why did you move into this whole sphere of being an image scientist and right. what was your inspiration and so on and so right. forth. So actually um I have about 3 decades of work experience and out of that about 2 decades goes into corporate uh starting with varied industries diverse industries right. uh from aviation to advertising media IT education right. research etc cetera, etc cetera. now there was one thing that happened as i moved along these industries and that i noticed there was a observation of kinds where i saw there was a common denominator that common denominator was the lack of ability or shall i say the lack of prowess to be able to make an impact and this happened regardless of age and experience of people and across industries so 
I initially, when I noticed it, right. it kind of stayed on in my head. But then as we moved along, I realized it started nagging me. Okay. So after about two decades of that corporate life, after having seen all, all of that, I decided one fine day that at the zenith of my career, by the way, uh, that I said, okay, let me just kind of, you know, wrap this up because this thought now is nagging me. Let me search for some answers. Correct. Why is it that people do not um, look towards being able to get to be that to that level where they can be very impactful right. in whatever they do, whether it's in their personal or their professional domain. And uh, I'm also inherently a person who doesn't go by just wins and fancies or just some information I find off the internet. So I decided to go the legit way, the scientific way. Okay. And that's where the PhD journey started because I wanted to search for the answers actually by doing a PhD. Right. Now, ironically, when I moved into that area, I didn't know I had nothing in my mind, no preconceptions. So when I walked in, I realized that as time went by, there was no seminal work in that area at okay. all. Okay. It was pristine. It was new. Right. And uh, as I delved into n number of subjects, of course, I was always one of those, like they say, padhaku bachas of sorts. Right. <laughs> but um, I had already spelled across a lot of subjects, but I went into in-depth study of psychology, sociology, anthropology, mm -hmm. semiotics, mm -hmm. design, communication, NLP, psychometrics, and so on and so forth. N number of things, advanced level of statistics mm -hmm. and mathematics and all of that. All of that. And that is only because I realized that I am in a brand new area where there has been no academic work, no seminal work at all. And I had the responsibility of doing something concrete. Correct. Anyway, the journey went on. And I think the inspiration came from people because this whole journey started with what I saw as a gap. The research gap made me finally move towards a PhD and ask, like I said, to myself answers and then finally get into the depth of the actual uh, concrete structures. And then as uh, time went by, I realized I was building scientific models, mathematical models, going into empirical testing and all sorts of things. How a typical scientist does. And then, of course, I had my first invention, which is a patented thing. It's the world's first PIQ, which is persona and image quotient. Okay. Okay. And of course, n number of things. Every year I keep coming up with new models and things like that. Right. So that's how the journey has really moved in. And now I find myself driven by, uh, again, people. Right. They made me get into the sphere. And now what I'm doing is I've turned the tables around. Now I'm delivering. I'm wow. helping them. So, so all of that scientific knowledge that I've created yeah. was not just meant to be kept somewhere. It was right. meant to actually deliver, deliver and contribute to society. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And I do this work across the globe now. So that's been pretty much my journey in terms of Super. an image scientist. And by the way, I know there are also people, I'll just add to this. Okay. The term image scientist is often confusing to most people because they're like, okay, what is this? Uh -huh. And... Uh, Lesser known to most people, the okay. image industry itself has a seven level hierarchy okay. of sorts, okay. starting with level one and okay. the topmost is level seven. And this is based on the proficiency, on the educational qualifications, on the depth of study, on experience and so on and so forth. So at level one, it's if you have the general, you know, a vibe of having something to do with aesthetics. Correct. You just have yeah. a general, you know, intuitive ability right. of sorts. Uh, so you start with a personal shopper and so on and so yeah. forth. And then uh, you have an image consultant, for example, at level three, right. uh, who generally looks more at the physicality and a little I bit see. of social dimensions yes. and things like yes. that. And you, you need not be, you know, like uh, a master's or something. You can be a 12th pass. You can be a graduate and still, you know, do an image consultancy certification okay. and get through. But okay. uh, an image scientist is on top of the rung, has to be a PhD holder in the subject. And like I said, there are inventions, there are discoveries, all sorts of things that are happening at a very therapeutic level. So physical, social, mental health, um, the uh, psychological, all of that space is okay. being taken care of at a very different level, okay. at an extremely intense educational level, if right. I may say. So that's another, I thought this is a good platform for people right. who have Absolutely. been scratching their heads and saying, who is an image scientist? Let me just kind of share that this is who an image scientist is. And right now, of course, I'm the first one in the world. And I think I'm the only one right now. There's nobody else who's done a PhD in the Whoa. subject. So I think Whoa, uh, that's a kudos to us Indians, yes, right? <laughs> uh, interesting. Um, I'm moving ahead. I'm sure that, uh, I'm not sure, obviously, we all know that you hold... Uh, multiple world records yeah. and so many national and international awards and honors uh, to your credit. You have brought India on the world map in your area of specialization and have made all of us so, so proud. 
Can you please tell us more about your subject, the science of Prim, your inventions, and your work in this area? Okay. Yeah. Um, Prim, the acronym stands for Persona and Image Management. Okay. This was something I coined when the whole research largely was already, you know, building into a good shape. Okay. So I knew it's no longer, you know, a subject that is image only. Right. Because that's incomplete. That's just a very small part of it. Correct. And that's how the whole subject was created. Persona and image management, which I call Prim. Right. Um, now, this subject, I've already given you the gyan about, you know, the kind of multidisciplinary approach that was there to create that subject. Um, it pretty much is a subject that helps to enhance people and the way they look at life, the way they feel about themselves. Okay. So, very simply put, I would say Prim helps you with your inner self outer self and your social self and there are enhancement strategies of course in terms of how you right. build it. I'm trying to keep it very simple and not yes. trying to sound like a typical scientist uh, no jargon throwing here so I'm just trying to speak what your audience might be able to easily gel with Adapt and yeah understand right so largely speaking there are three prongs I take it like a divine trident of sorts a okay. trident has three prongs to it right so the first prong is personality and persona management okay which is to do with your core foundation, right. your inner value system, right. your values, your ethics, your inner beliefs, your thoughts, all of that. Okay. That is the first part of the subject. The second part is image management, okay. which in my scientific study, I've come up with six elements okay. uh, that form part of image management. Uh, your self-concept, your verbal skills, body language, your uh, clothing, your grooming Absolutely. and etiquette. Absolutely. So that's pretty much what is image management. And the third prong is strategic self-management, which is everything to do with all of those professional skills you will need to be able to, you know, thrive as well as succeed in your right. professional domain. Right. And uh, that has the WHO's 10 life skills. Apart from that, it stands on the periphery of UNESCO's four pillars of learning hmm. and um, that apart it has skills like networking like which is like so important right today um, skills like time management leadership right. uh, decision making problem solving blah 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 all of those kind of things Absolutely. so this is all um, an area or it's a big package that helps you to grow professionally uh, in your area or right. in your space or whichever right. industry you belong to. Right. So all of it put together is Prim. Right. With regard to the inventions, I think I've already shared uh, PIQ, right? Yes. The yes. Persona and yes. Image Quotient. It's a patented product. Right. But every single year, I come up with N number of things. Research papers, research conferences, every single time that I bring out things. And uh, there is a, there's a Prim Pact Integrated Transformation Model. There's right. a Tilsom Framework. They're like I won't even quote those names. It doesn't right. matter really. Right. But there are N number of things which are all copyrighted and patented, of course. And uh, I'm using them hmm. to uh, help people to grow to be a most incredible version of themselves. That's the whole aim behind so this whole storyline. Yeah, so largely speaking, Prim is a subject which I want and I, and I normally tell people in the line of uh, transformation, people who are into transformation, yeah. to probably read up my thesis or read my work so that they can enhance what they're doing for their clients and help them to grow at a different level too. So uh, that's broadly what uh, um, I mean. I've been able to explain about Prim. Prim. Yeah. Okay, uh, ma'am. Uh, as I already said, uh, that you know you have uh, been awarded with many titles. But um, you're talking about the title, hmm. uh, genius polymath, for being an image scientist. And obviously, as I already said in my intro, that you're a uh, you're a scientist, a pilot, a creative director, an author an educationist, an entrepreneur, an impact strategist, what not. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, so much more. You've been successfully spanned across the sciences, the creative arts, management and entrepreneurship, which is an extremely rare combination. <laughs> Let me tell you that. It would be great and inspiring for our audience to know uh, when it all began or how you were able to excel in so many varied things? That's a very interesting question, I must right. say. Um, okay, so I think that habits set their foundation in your childhood. And all you need to do is keep nurturing them as you move along. So my story also obviously would go back to my childhood. Correct. 
um so i think i was born with this very beautiful bug in my head a bug called curiosity and that curiosity made me an avid learner for life and i still thrive in it because i think it makes me constantly energized to know more i'm inquisitive i'm curious to always know so much more and so i'm very happy that that's happened and that's the reason i travel so many different industries as i right. mentioned aviation and Absolutely. advertising media right. it education research right. entrepreneurship and right. by the way the most recent one is interior design so it's like it's an endless thing that i keep doing can i ask you this is there anything left oh there's tons <laughs> believe yeah. me there's tons there's okay. tons and i look forward to growing myself as an individual okay. so anyway i think starting young and again lesser known to most people when i was just 6 months of age uh, i was afflicted with polio in my right leg oh i had a severe bout of dehydration okay. and so nobody got to know of it uh, not the doctors not my parents oh. nobody it was only when i when i reached the stage where i had to start walking that's when people realize that okay there's a problem there and you know there's you there's this up. issue so i didn't obviously i didn't that's yeah. why i'm where i am today uh the good thing was my father uh, supported me a lot and uh, i worked very 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 hard on myself because i knew the only way to be able to be normal like anyone else because you know what happens in polio right just walking running itself is a big challenge right. so to be normal i needed to you know really work very hard and to excel i had to overperform and overdo myself and that is exactly the notion that set me right from my childhood so here was this father who tells his daughter that there's nothing wrong with you you can do pretty much anything you want and here's the daughter who picks up that as the gospel truth and says okay there's nothing wrong with me i can do pretty much anything i want and then you get into a self challenge mode mm. so i by i think middle school i had already become a bharatanatyam dancer i challenged everything that had to do with legs okay I by the end of my school I was a national level athlete. Um I was a parade commander in the paramilitary forces and I turned into a pilot. So everything that needs your legs to be perfect, right? I had already challenged. I became like a positive disruptor of sorts for myself. And that like I said habits set the foundation. Right. In my childhood I had already got into that and intellectually I was taking part in all sorts of competitions. Academia I was into the deep deepest part of it. So I think as I moved along in life I by now had been habituated to do multiple things apart from academics and that continues even till date and that's why this whole genius polymath angle that you spoke of right. how did it start and right. where I right. think that's how it must have started, started. that's right. my perception okay. that I never left something um saying that okay now the time is over for this Correct. so I can only do one thing at a time I know and I'm talking to all the parents out there who encourage their children to let's say only be an engineer or only be a doctor or only there is so much more scope look at me i'm a live example of this right, right? Absolutely. you can do so much more yes. it's only when you push yourself against the wall you realize that there is so much more that you can do and you know until that you don't even know what your potential is so i think my whole journey of being a create a genius polymath and of course i'm very humbled and overwhelmed even the day i remember i was given this title um I don't make a big deal of it but I do know it's a pat on my back to say that okay you know uh, you can keep encouraging yourself right. to keep performing and encourage people around you Absolutely. to be multipotentialites. Right. So uh, Dr. Kuldeep on one hand you have been into creative writing and on the other you have been part of creation of a hundred educational books on aviation IT personality development etc. apart from your latest book that is prim and powerful which is being loved by people across continents could you please tell us more about this book and what is it about okay firstly thank you for displaying my book that's really sweet um yeah prim and powerful the genesis of the thought of this book actually came from the fiki summit 2013 where they shared that by 2030 india will be one of the youngest nations in the world out of 140 million graduates in the world one out of four graduates will be a product of the indian higher education yes. system when i read that my eyes just popped up and i was like wow what an opportunity for india imagine having such a young workforce by 2030 and instantly i asked myself kuljeet what can you do in this whole scenario See the fact is I've been working with the youth and professionals for a long time right. now and I've been going into a lot of live 
one-on-one -on -one sessions right. as well as in-person kind of seminars and I knew that journey will carry on. Absolutely. But the thought that came to my mind was like, there is no way I can touch base with the entire population of our grand nation. So that's when I said, okay, what if I write a book and share what I want to share right. in that so that it can be made available to organizations, to universities, to the students and uh, put it across, you know, marketing channels like Amazon or Flipkart right. or wherever. So it's easy yeah, and available. Easy, huh? And that's how I got into writing the book. I wrote this book in 20 days because it was all here. Yeah, I was just morning, typing, evening. typing, typing. Yeah, morning, evening, morning, evening. All I was doing was type, 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 type. And I just sent it off. So for the 20 days, and you were all... 20 days, I, was, I don't know what else happened outside my home. Okay. All I was doing was <laughs> getting the right. book ready. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Super. And uh, so this book is a good, I would say, warm up okay. into... The Science of Prim. Now, firstly, I want to tell you the title, Prim and Powerful. Oh. Prim by now, I think the audience has guessed. Prim is obviously the subject, persona and image management. There is this old phrase called Prim and Proper. Prim and Proper. A very British kind of a oh. phrase, right? Okay. I didn't want to say Prim and Proper because people will immediately connect Prim with the word, you know, and Proper. I was proper. like, no, because that's not the moot message that I want to give in the book. On the other hand, I realized that what I'm trying to deliver in the book okay. is something where I'm saying that I want to build your inner and outer self in like a true warrior, like a yodha, yodha as they say, right. like a true warrior who has immense amount of strength and has indomitable strength from the outside and inner power is amazing. Oh, yeah. You know, like yeah. both of them put together. Absolutely. So the first word that came to my mind was power. So that's how it became prim and powerful. powerful. Yeah. Right. And even if you look at the byline, which says, soar into the skies on the wings of confidence. Correct. That, of course, I must say, being a pilot, it's natural. I'm saying, talking about soaring on the wings of confidence, right? So typically as a pilot, right. the thought that came into my mind is when I take off and I have my aircraft in the, uh, in the sky, the winds will push your aircraft like life does for us, right? right? But we don't lose sight of our destination. Correct. So... The whole moot message of what I wanted to convey in the book mm -hmm. is techniques for every person, any individual for that matter, okay. to be able to build himself or herself so strongly, so powerfully, that regardless of all the jolts that life pushes across to you, that person has the strength like a warrior who learns to plan, build the ammunition for that journey ahead, doesn't lose focus of that final destination and moves forward and reaches the destination successfully. Successfully. So yeah. all of that came in as, you know, the whole theme behind it. The theme in a way is what the title and the byline is. Okay. As far as the book is concerned, the one good thing that I think I realized, and I did this consciously, was that... Um, I spoke of me doing seminars, right, with people. And this was a way to reach the audiences. Correct. So I said, if I make it sound like, oh, there's an image scientist who's written, you know, all kinds of statistical data, right. maths, figures, models. Nobody's going to open that book. And even if they do, they won't understand anything out of it. Correct. So I realized that I'll have a conversation with my reader. It's like how you and I are talking. Yes, the right. entire book is written in that way. Okay. As if we are having coffee. A conversation. We're having coffee in my living right. room. Right. And I'm talking to you about Prim. Wow. The entire book from start to end is exactly that way. And I'm glad I did that because I've had millions of responses from people saying we loved the tone of the book. Wow. We never felt like we were reading an academic book because it isn't an academic book. Okay. It's a conversation. And the good thing here is there's some sections which I've put in. It's called power moves to do with powerful, right? Yes. So the power move is basically like a do it yourself. Like you have videos, right? right that say right. do it yourself. Correct. So this is not just gyan that's being given, not just information, Correct. but there are power moves which actually you have to use and implement in your actual life. So right. if somebody has, let's say, fear of getting onto stage, Correct. how do you overcome it? Right. Not just through telling you, okay, do this, do that. No. Do it in a certain way. In so there's a power move. Yes, if absolutely. somebody has inner issues in Correct. terms of self-worth, low right. self-esteem, how do you do it? So there are power moves that define all of that. And there are many, many power moves all through the Book. book and I'm happy that this book right from a, an eight standard child to a 60 year old who's a retired gentleman everybody's come back to me saying we loved this book Wow! and the 20 chapters span around entirely almost entirely the span of the subject so it's not the detailed version but it's the first warm-up into the subject so I'm looking at people being able to 
engulf themselves with it, you know, immerse themselves in it and pick up whatever they can best right. so that they make the difference right. to themselves. Right. Now that you've talked about the book, Prim and Powerful, uh, definitely, you know, uh, like me, to uh, all the listeners and all our, all the viewers who are right behind the camera, <laughs> I'm sure they are going to run and get this book. So please tell everyone that where is this book available? I mean, is it? Ah, okay. So this is available on Amazon. All you have to do is type Prim and Powerful. It's there on Flipkart. Okay. Uh, luckily, and I'm, I feel very blessed. This was launched on the eve of Republic Day oh, by wow. our famous film director, Mr. Raju Hirani. Okay. And uh, that was the India launch. Right. And uh, then the global launch happened last year okay. in London okay. at uh, an international conference. Okay. And uh, there, it, that international conference was commemorating the royal coronation of King Charles. Okay. So oh. we had a global launch there of the book and uh, it's being accepted and received very, very well. So I'm happy because it's a not-for-profit book. I don't make, I'm, this is not for profit really. Every, in fact, anytime somebody buys a book, yeah. it's actually going to empower the underprivileged youth, right. the economically challenged right. youth. So uh, my mission was only to deliver knowledge. And if people can take advantage of that, that's great. So yeah, on Amazon, Flipkart, they can just go ahead and, you know, pick it up. Okay. And enjoy it. Enjoy it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And uh, talking about this picture on the book, May I please know when was this picture taken or where? Ah. Or any, any story? I think it was just Anything? a couple of years ago, probably. Yeah. I didn't work too hard on going and getting myself shot anywhere. So when this book came in, like I said, 20 days. So I was like, I don't want to waste too much time. Okay. I handed it over to the publishers and they said, what have you thought for the, for the book cover? Okay. I said, just keep it plain. Just have the name. Achoo. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Okay. And they thought about it and they said, why not just have a picture of you? Hmm. Since you are the pioneer of the subject. Yes, yes. Absolutely. I was like, okay, I hope that doesn't look narcissist. <laughs> because I... Lovely. But they were the ones who came up with that idea. And they said, you know, let's just have your picture. Definitely. And I, I didn't work hard. I said, okay, I just gave them a few pictures I had. And I was like, pick whatever you think is nice. And they yeah. evidently liked this. So that's where the picture came yes. onto the uh, front cover. Superb. And uh, ma'am, this is my personal question to you. That how far you believe that, uh, you know, with the term knowledge is a, uh, you know, key to success. How far do you believe? 100%. Yes. Not 100, 1000%. 1000%. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I'll tell you, if I'm sitting in this chair today and you're interviewing me, if I didn't have knowledge as my strongest weapon, Correct. I wouldn't be here. Correct. Absolutely. And the same applies to anyone in their life at any stage. It doesn't matter what stage you are in. But I think when you have knowledge, you bring in a sense of, logic right. you also be, uh, become more mature in the way you handle things you are more rational in your right. thinking right. you can build your ammunition more correctly Absolutely. more appropriately right. you can also guide, guide and contribute to society, society. better Absolutely. there are n number of things so knowledge definitely is power in its own right. way and it's extremely important wow, so to amplify yourself yeah. very well said thank you very much my pleasure and thank now you. coming to our next segment ma'am of visionary voices okay we have this rapid fire round Okay. So are you ready? Yeah. What is your take on the saying, the first impression is the best impression? It's actually very true. Right. The first impression is the best impression. And that also comes from a reason because you have something called a primacy effect. Right. And uh, typically, if there's a whole list of things, Correct. typically a human being will remember right. the first thing. Absolutely. So uh, in that series, mm. you tend to leave an impression on Correct. people. And uh, also, you don't get the second chance to make your first impression, right? Very true, very true. Right? Uh, but having said that, I also have another take to that. Right. And that is that um, to conclude about a person, whether it's the character, potential, blah, 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 whatever, just the first impression should not be taken as the gospel truth because it's not, it doesn't really define the person in totality. Correct. So I think somewhere it's good to get impacted. And it happens by default. Correct. But uh, to build an entire conclusion about a person's character or potential, I think we should wait, wait beyond just the first impression. Correct. Okay. Could you share some tips for building a strong online presence and managing your digital image effectively? So, in fact, interestingly, in today's world, people are even looking at role models who display authenticity. Right. Nobody wants to follow someone who is just, you know, all about having a facade, having a different persona, which is not true to life. Right. And uh, people need to understand that when they 
you know, kind of see people celebrating big events in their lives and stuff like that on social media. Correct. There is an aspiration that comes from within them that we also need to showcase such things. Right. But for heaven's sake, there are millions of people on Instagram, for example, and each one will obviously showcase their own, you know, best moments of their lives. Right. That doesn't mean that is their actual life. That's a particular episode happening once in a year, let's say like a birthday, for example. So I think people have to stop comparing, copying, imitating, all of that and start being true to themselves. Um, it's very, very important. How do you help individuals or organizations align their image with their goals and values? Okay, so I have something called an impact incubator. This is what I've developed for myself. And through the incubator are tons of scientific models and right, structures right, that right. a person has to go through. The simple process is first for me to understand what is their current image. Correct. So for that, there is a whole test. One is PIQ, of course, as I mentioned, there are other uh, scientific models. Uh, next is once I've deciphered, okay, this is where the gap is. Then I try and understand what are their values, what's the mission, what's the goals, objectives, etc., etc., of the organization or the individual. Okay. And then I try and tailor the requirements that would be needed for that. Okay. Once that is done, then we put it into action. And when we say action, all those processes start Absolutely. and we make sure we monitor all of that consistently. Right. There's an assessment. And at any point in time, if something is working or needs to be tweaked, uh, if it's not totally working, then we tweak that because every organization varies from another, right? right? So you have to see what is relevant to their uh, vision. But it's a cycle which goes into months together. It's not something that happens overnight. I've never believed in an overnight transformation. It doesn't happen. It's just uh, a myth. So uh, yeah, that's typically the entire cycle. And in that, like I said, because it's scientifically devised, there is a very rigorous process, but it, it works out beautifully. Right. So you finally, from start to end, Correct. you see the difference. Right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, ma'am, as an image scientist and uh, an impact strategist, you have transformed lakhs and lakhs of people mm. globally. Can you please uh, tell us about uh, or recall any individual success story uh, that is close to your heart and, uh, you know, whose image transformed under your mentorship? Okay. So I'm just thinking like, it's a very tough one because all my mentees are very special to me. And there are so many cases uh, but I do have a soft corner for the economically challenged people, especially okay. the youth okay. and more so girls. Okay. Okay. So I'll quickly tell you about this uh, young girl who was the daughter of a domestic help. Oh. And I chanced upon her when she was just in her middle school. Okay. And as uh, time went by, I realized that her parents didn't want to continue her education. They were thinking oh. of marriage and okay. so on and so forth. Uh, I started engaging with her because I kind of saw a spark in her. And she was okay in studies. I'm not okay. saying she was bad. She was okay. But I think I took her under my umbrella okay. completely. And over a period of time, uh, not only was I able to convince the parents to let her study, I, of course, financially also supported right. her. Right. But um, she finished her 12th. She finished her graduation from Symbiosis. And then she went in to do her master's, her MBA. Okay. And then she got placed by Baiju's. And now she's a marketing manager okay. with HDFC. Wow. Super. Yeah. So it's been like... An amazing journey and I feel very blessed that I could make a difference to her and all the lakhs of people, of course, yes, since yes. you asked one incident. I know I, for me, it was a very proud moment because right. she's, it was literally, uh, sorry, literally like a rags to riches kind of a story. Oh. But through, you know, constant mentorship, wow. years and years of hard work that went into so far, wow. uh, making her the yes. way she was. Not just me, her effort, her, me guiding her and mentoring her, of course. Guidance, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, that's very inspiring. And last but not the least, Dr. Kuljeet Uppal as a scientist or Dr. Kuljeet Uppal as an aviator? Whoa! <laughs> it's like saying, okay, do you prefer your daughter or your son? I can't do that. <laughs> That's, That's not fun, fair. So, you know what? I, I have a passion for flying. Right. It's my heartbeat. Super. But my mind is full of this determined focus towards contributing to society. So, you can't segregate your heart and your mind, right? right. But uh, I would say the whole body the heart and the mind. So I, I can't, I can't pick one. That's a okay. real tough one. Okay. Know? Okay. But still, if you had to then. I'd say the scientist because 
flying for me would be very individual where I'm enjoying. Okay. But the scientist is the same person who's making an impact on people's definitely, lives. So definitely. it's definitely beyond me. So it goes scientist. beyond to definitely. society, to people. So right. yeah, right. the image scientist part. Thank you very much, Dr. Kuljeev. It was lovely and it was truly inspiring having you Thank at you. the Visionary Voices. Thank you for inspiring. Thank you for educating. And uh, thank you for being the first image scientist. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I wish you all the very best for the coming and eight years. Thank you so much, Simran. I've had a blast talking thank to you, you today. Thank and you. Uh, thank you, Visionary Voices, for having me here. I do hope I've added Pleasure. some value to your audience Absolutely. in this little discussion that we've had. Thank you so much. Yes.